I, of course, try to look at the positive sides of, of um, the, the corona pandemic. Uh, I didn't wish for it. I didn't want it. Uh, I didn't invent it. But now that we have it and the situation is the most dire situation that we've had, uh, definitely in my lifetime, uh, it's like a war without a war. Uh, but on the other hand, you could also uh, look at it from the perspective of, uh, you know, a fictional Moses who wasn't really actually a person, but somebody who said, let my people go home, <laughs> let my people go home, let my people go to their homes. And uh, that alone, I think, will create such a whirlwind of, of new thoughts and new ideas. Every single one of us has to rethink their rituals, their uh, things that they've been used to life, the structure in their work and the necessities uh, that some of them don't seem to be so important ones that we can cross out many things out of our lives. Let me first start with um, the famous um, article by Francis Fukuyama, whom, whom you had here in, in the debate with Samuel Huntington. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think Fukuyama was, was, when it comes to trust, he is, I think, the leading expert. I think he was right, actually, uh, in the end of history, because interestingly enough, what we hoped for is for market democracy. This is the uh, or liberal democracy, liberal market democracy, maybe. That's the best um, best uh, fitting word for for our European system. Uh, um, uh, this is something um, uh, that has was expected to be exported to the world: democracy and market capitalism. This is what we thought 30 years ago and the end of history, it is now clear that this regime is the strongest. I think it was successful halfway. We've exported market capitalism very well to China and to other countries, to Russia, uh, other countries of the world, but democracy, not so much. It seems that uh, democracy, the export of democracy has not been very successful. Look at the Arabic Spring, uh, look at Russia, look at China. I mean, countries have definitely taken capitalism without a question. Everybody is uh, letting go of the planned system at different speeds, but this is definitely the direction. But uh, when it comes to democratization, here you can see even some undemocratic tendencies within, within Europe and uh, the disturbing news that we now hear from the United States of America, where the biggest advantage of democracy is not that um, the entrusted, the best entrusted, the best person wins, but that we trust that the person who loses leaves the office without a bloodshed, which is far from clear, uh, as we are seeing the, the uh, results of the uh, final stages of election in the United States of America. That system, that system that we have here, seems to be very fragile, but it's built on a good quality trust. It's actually the only system that's based on spontaneous, unenforced trust. And there is such a thing that we call, or, or with my friends and some philosophers call it the kindness of nature. That it so happens, that my, that's my point number two, my hope into the future, it so happens that systems that are uh, free and creative and highly educated and less corrupt and more trusting each other in, in, the, in the official institution that it has, that uh, uh, this system is also a wealthy system. There is no trade-off. The kindness of nature, this is something that we know from theoretical physics. It so happens that the universe is fertile to bring forth just the right amount of gravity for the planets to form, just the right, right um, uh, speed of the expansion of the universe. It's a very fine-tuned machine, extremely extremely fine, fine, fine-tuned machine, this cosmos is. And in physics, they call it the kindness of nature. We don't know, somehow, some, some good things tend to happen. Um, and this also is something that I should think we should use in, in, in humanities, that high levels of trust go together with high levels of wealth, a better quality of living. Although the system looks very poor, very sunshine, very, you know, uh, very idealistic, very, um, um, very much um, good mensch, very fragile, very much protecting every single tiny minority, you know. Um, so on the first hand, it looks like a totalitarian regime should go faster, you know. Even the COVID response in China, you could see, was, you know, not very democratic and not very uh, sensitive, but it was very fast. 
and it worked. So on the first hand, it looks like the totalitarian regimes should be uh, superior to these, uh, you know, fragile democratic uh, institution, trust-based institution-based uh, system such as liberal democracy. But look at the history. We have been formed like a diamond in the crash. 70 years ago, there was a huge crash of two supermassive ideologies. One of them, extreme right, Nazism, and the other extreme left, communism. Now, these two totalitarian uh, uh, alternatives to liberal democracies rose and they clashed against each other over, over this territory. And what was left on the ground was the diamond, hardly pressed diamond of liberal democracy. In a society that can trust each other is a richer and wealthier society. Let me go to the topic of trust in companies, which is exactly the topic of today's conference, and let me look into the future. I think that in that what we are seeing now is in a way uh, a little, uh, let me say, uh, a little uh, uh, trailer demo version of the future. I think, in fact, this is how we will be working most of the day. You will be, uh, the society is becoming more and more uh, spirit laden, so to speak. We are no more um, working with our hands. Uh, the majority of the society is now service factor. So somebody who is actually there uh, alternating matter, making cars, making computers, making spoons, making paper, pens, that part of society is being um, evacuated by people. It is being um, occupied by more and more machines. And people are moving from matter to more spiritual and intellectual um, uh, arena of life. And this is happening um, pretty much everywhere. So creativity of a human being is what's going to be important. Be as abstract as you can. Try to think ahead 30 years, 20 years, how will the situation look like? And this COVID is giving you a nice example. Just as a mental image, just try to imagine that this is going to last for 30 years. How would you do this? How would you do that? Let's, of course, hope not. But maybe the companies, our companies, will function much better if we move, or definitely government-owned companies, if we move the bureaucracy on, uh, on the internet and let people go home and do creative things. And this will enhance both trust in the economy in the company and in the very planet that we live in.